Hi everyone, uh, hopefully I am live here. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so apologies if it's a bit all over the place because listen, we all gotta start somewhere. Uh, apologies for the state of my conservatory, my children are still up, so I had to run away and uh, try to find a quiet uh, spot in the house. Uh, so welcome along, we're delighted to have the first episode of our new Bench Talk series, which Basketball Ireland are gonna be running uh, on this page over the next, uh, couple of weeks or there so about 10 weeks we've got some brilliant guests lined up tonight Michael Darren McCauley is going to be with me in just a couple of minutes and uh, we've got Aidan O'Shea Pat Burke John Carroll all coming up over the next few weeks we've got women's sensations as well Lindsay Pete Michelle Fahey Edel Thornton and we've got a couple of brilliant family specials coming up as well that I think you guys are really really going to like uh, we've got Darren and Neil Randolph are going to be along with us from the Randolph dynasty that they uh, have been over the years Kelvin and Mimi Troy be delighted to hear from both of them, two of my uh, favourite basketball people out there, I have to say. And speaking of a couple of my favourite basketball people, Gronya and Neil Dwyer are going to be joining me as well in a couple of weeks. Really looking forward to chatting to them about all things basketball, uh, their careers and everything. But uh, our first one tonight, Michael Darren McCauley is going to be along with him. Let me just tap in here and see if I can get him, if I can let him in. There he is. Uh, Hopefully he should pop up and you should see him. Um, but look, do get your questions in for him if you want to let him in as well. You can do them on the uh, Basketball Ireland Twitter page or you can do them on here and I'll try to put them to Mick. How are you getting on? Uh, Jackie, what's going on? Yeah, well, good. How are you? I'm good, good. There I am falling over, falling for you very early on. Apologies for that. Uh, how's lockdown been? How has lockdown been? Uh, lock Damn, that's been been okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's probably been been better than most. Um, yeah, the, the usual, the usual. I'm, I'm still getting used to this whole Instagram live thing. Me too. Uh, Me too. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Instagram. Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, yeah, like the same as everyone else. I think just kind of highs and lows. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of I'm, I'm not I'm not too bad a situation. I know a lot of people are kind of really struggling with the weddings cancelled and they had jobs uh, gone and all that sort of stuff. So in fairness, I, I, I haven't been too bad on a whole. What have you been doing? What have you been up to? Uh, what have been doing? So I work, my work uh, is my kind of community work in the inner city. A lot of that's been kind of wound down. A lot of it's kind of events based. So you kind of can't get people together. So we've been trying to think outside the box with that sort of stuff. Um, we have been, yeah, like we've been doing like, you know, we're actually working with the old folks mainly for the last while. I was actually trying to get them out of their house uh we have like little retirement uh homes and we have them like coming outside bringing their chairs outside their houses and on a wednesday i do come to any place and tunes for them and then on a friday i do some yoga with them Brilliant. Uh, so yeah that's kind of fun um, i think you love that though yeah yeah just like like a lot of them literally hadn't seen fresh air in weeks uh so that was and, and then now we're kind of kicking up to get kicking up back up to the speeds and getting used to all the, the usual reels like Everyone else. Uh, so that's all good. That's all good. Uh, and then, yeah, training. Same as everyone else. Same as all the other athletes that are probably watching this. Uh, kind of just trying my best. Yeah, trying to do all the mutual stuff. Out the back garden stuff. And meeting one or two lads for runs and, and all that sort of stuff. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's gone okay. I know, like, yoga has obviously always been a big part of your life. You know, in these kind of circumstances, I'd imagine doing something like that actually probably helps. Just keep the mind sort of just ticking over a little bit as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah, I think for the last while I've probably been more of a yoga teacher than anything. Uh, so I've been kind of teaching a good bit on Zoom and uh, then the, the, the real life classes with all the old folk in the inner city. So, um, yeah, it's just like, it, it, it's, uh, I, think it's, I think everyone's just looking for a bit of chill at the moment. And uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's, that's going well, yeah. In terms of the chilling then, are you like everyone else? Did you watch The Last Dance? Did you binge watch it all in one go? Did you wait for it every week? Did you watch it at all? What's, what's The Last Dance? The Michael Jordan thing. Ah, go away. Of course I watched last night. So, like, yeah. Where, where do I get started on this? So, I've had, like, every single Zoom call, the four billion of them that I've had over the last two months. I've had them sitting in this exact seat. So, and, like, this isn't for show or just because I'm on Basketball Ireland, but, like, this is what is in the middle of my kitchen. Oh, class. Uh, so, that's, yeah. Oh, I um, love that. I, I, I realise he's, he's, he's of the moment at the moment. But, um, yeah, like, it, it was amazing. Like, I suppose, look, I, I, I kind of I grew up with that. Like, that was my thing. That was my, that was my, that was why I looked up to, like, when I, like, when I was just turning, like, 
kind of 10 years old, I just did the first three feet and like, that was like the big thing. Um, but last time, it was brilliant. It was like, it was amazing. Like every one of my mates who couldn't spell basketball, they were just like, everyone is into it. Like, and it's cool here and everyone in Ireland just talking about basketball again. So it's great. That's what I thought was mad because like, I was like that as well. Like, you know, they were the child, you know, I was like everybody in the nineties just loved it, totally grew up on it, loved them, loved everything about it. But it's like mates of mine who don't like basketball are suddenly like, Jesus, poor old Scotty Pippen. How was he so badly paid? Like it's mad, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone has an opinion on like, yeah, Dennis Rodman and everything that's killed. Uh, so yeah, I hope, like, I hope this kind of like, this kind of transfer is over. Like everyone's like, like basketball Ireland can kind of capitalize on it and, and get, get kind of balls in, in these kids' hands. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been great. Like, I think, um, yeah, like, I, like, I used, yeah, he, he's, always, he's always like the, the number one uh, lad that I pick. Like when everyone says, he's your sporting idol. Like it kind of, it was, it was a no brainer for me uh, as a kid. So um, when you were a kid though, like, I mean, even I, I saw Marie Crow tweeting earlier, her little kid, Timmy Sheehan, who's a basketballer and a footballer. He was asking, you know, when you were a kid, did you want to be a basketballer or a footballer? Like, obviously, basketball was a big part of your life when you were a kid. Yeah, bas basketball was the biggest part of my life as a kid, without, without, without a doubt. And um, so, like, I, I suppose people, like, it's, it's just where, where we grew up. Like, like when we grew up in, in Bunny Round and Farnham, and that, like, that school... Basketball was just sold as the biggest thing ever. Like so, like we 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 went to school. We, we started playing basketball. Breakfast basketball at seven o'clock every morning. About half seven every morning. We went to our first class at nine o'clock, dripping sweat, and we did that every single day, Monday to Friday. Um, but it it, it was one fella, and anyone around the area, I'm sure you probably come across Jerry O'Brien. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry's like. Um and he, like I just remember sitting down as a little kid, and he just telling you these stories of like of the players who had just gone before you and how they like scored three pointers and all this sort of stuff uh, so that's that that was it for us as, as, a, as a kid like um and, and he really inspired everyone everyone from the club would have gone on to play for Notre Dame which is a, a subsequently become a so and when you went to secondary school then you went to Black Rock right I presume that I mean did they have basketball there obviously a lot of people would know it's a big rugby school but what was their basketball like there or did they have it no, no, there's no no basketball there. So they, I tell you, that's a lie. That's a lie. Uh, so there was, but like I was like the player, coach, and captain, and of the sixth year team, or like second second year and stuff. So it, it wasn't very well put together. But I actually enjoyed it. Like it was it was it was kind of good fun. Uh, but basketball isn't isn't a big part of it, I suppose. Yeah, a lot of people on there saying Jerry's a legend. By the way, there's a lot of people backing you up there on that uh, on our Instagram here. Yeah. Oh, there's people here. Can I see all these people? Yeah, you can kind of now listen here. You and me are like schooling. <laughs> you can kind of scroll, I think, and see some of the comments at the bottom. By the way, people, there you go. I think it is. I'll think try to scroll back and see if I can add a few. Come here. We did have a few of your former teammates getting in, uh, involved in the questions earlier as well, because Brian Gartland, obviously, a lot of people know him as a Dundalk footballer, but a former okay. teammate of yours. He wanted to know, I think this is a great question, what's a better feeling, uh, a buzzer beater in Mary or first point against Kerry? Oh, buzzer beater in Mary. <laughs> yeah, that's like, this is like the only time I've ever done this. Uh, but I, but I <laughs> Brian would have been on that team and like, what's that under? I'm sure Brian can maybe uh, confirm on their 14s maybe. Uh, that I scored one of those like buzzer beaters, um, and everyone ran on the pitch and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so that that was loads of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, but you uh, never forget those, do you? Yeah, yeah, you, you don't, you don't, you never forget those. Um, like, I, like yeah, um, I was like, I was kind of just thinking about it, about like, like what was basketball when I was growing up, and like, I know, like, you, I know a lot of people might have seen like the like the documentary there was the We Got Game about the basketball in the eighties. Like some people don't understand, and kind of like me and you are the same age, and I, I think we would have caught the tail end of that. Mm -hmm. But like basketball when I was a kid was like this huge thing that like like that was like every Friday night like that's the it wasn't up for debate. Like, that's where I was. I was up in the arena like smashing the the hula hoop sign or whatever it was, uh, and and screaming at the lads, and and, and like all the games are sold out, and like. All, all, all the Americans over at the time were just like were so legendary to us. Um, like all the like, I suppose in a big way, Anthony Jenkins would have had a huge influence on me as my coach. But all, all the other lads, like Lenny McMillan and Elton Troy, I know Elton is going to be involved in this, mm -hmm. uh, and like the Ed Randolph and all the big dogs that we had. 
like the Jerome Westbrook's, like all these, all these guys were, were, were like heroes when, when, when we were uh, a little nipper. So like, I think, I think some people like don't, don't understand what basketball was in Ireland at once upon a time. And I think, I think it's getting back there as well, so. Yeah, and actually when I read um, Kieran Shannon's book, Hanging from the Rafters, and I reread it like as a grown up, and I was thinking, God, it really brings you back to your, your childhood years because um, Mimi Troy was on the, Irish under 16 program where I was managing the team and I remember Kelvin came in and I was like oh it's Kelvin Troy you know and he's obviously just her dad at this point and I'm like okay right you obviously need to just talk to this guy as a parent of one of the kids that you're going to be managing but actually in real life you're there thinking this guy was a rock star and like proper part of your childhood where like I'm like there's a big part of me feels sorry that some kids didn't get that because it was such a big thing like when I was in Cork we'd be like that now going up to Neptune and watching all that and it was just such an amazing an atmosphere that, and in a lot of ways it's a sport that we don't replicate that in a lot of other sports I know you know basketball has tried to re recreate that now but I feel like we, we don't have that like the GAA doesn't have that you know yeah yeah no it, it definitely was special like I was I would have been hounding the likes of Troy and Randolph and stuff to like sign my like Roy Curtis ticket and stuff and all, <laughs> all that sort of stuff back in the day um, and like and then it was like the, the big weekend like the end of January was always like the like like that that's where you were from from Friday afternoon to Sunday night uh, that's that's where you were so um yeah look they they they're like I suppose like like they're special times but I suppose like I, th I think basketball has gone the right direction again and um, so it would be great to see you kind of hit those those, those big heights again you know yeah. What about you then? Like in terms of just even with your career with Aina, everything that's happened there, like you talked about some of those glory days, but like winning national cups with this team when you were growing up. I mean, it wasn't just that you were loving the basketball. You were really successful, too. And you look at what Aina have done. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing to be involved in a club like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think like like I so thought we, we were and like I'd say been 90 percent of it can be traced back to Jerry O'Brien. Uh, to be honest, like him, him, him getting people started early, but there was a hugely, hugely successful kind of uh, team that, that, that we go through. Blue. Like we, we barely lost the game. Uh, going through, through the youths, um, I think like and probably peak for me when we won a, a kind of two national cups at under nineteen and stuff. But yeah, yeah. So we, I would have played like like Scott Kinnaman, who's still still doing mm -hmm. very well in the league, and and Kieran White, uh, O'Reilly and Kinger, and all these all these guys. Um, and then I so suppose we would like. Yeah, so we would have had rivalries like all, all around Dublin, like the hallway up since we were babies with like all the Meanies and Marion and all the Westbrooks in Clether. And uh, actually, I saw Isaac Westbrooks throw me shade on Twitter earlier. I think he, <laughs> I think he wanted uh, I think he wanted to be on the podcast instead of me, uh, which is probably fair enough. Um, but uh, I would have had like I would have had wars as a kid growing up, but like Aaron was my age, uh, so I would have loved playing Aaron like uh, over in over in uh, Clontarf for for uh, as a kid um, and then yeah like all the, all the Donnellys and Vincents and even uh, even the Murphys up in a uh, open Cork as well or down in Cork so yeah like like they're all they're all like they're all great rivalries as a kid for me growing up and what about like when did it become when did you know that you were going to be good at this like was it always there from a young age or or like when did you recognize here listen I could give this a go oh like I always thought I was going to the NBA like that was that was, that was, that was without question like um, so I like, but like I, I was like, yeah, I was like, like what time is it? Like it wasn't didn't come overnight. Like I was like, we had a ring in my back garden, and it was like a solid steel ring that has been there. It's like a, it's it's like the Rooker Park of that farm. Like anyone who has played basketball has played in in, in this ring. Uh, but um, like I, I would have been there like morning until night. Like and and I kind of said that before. My dad had to like install like a spotlight for me to play when the lights went off. And then my neighbours used to come in and like beg me to like please when Michael Darrods go to bed <laughs> like, sleep. And I had one of these metal chain link uh, nets. Uh, and the odd time we actually got it in the basket, uh, it, it made some noise. But um, yeah, so like I was kind of obsessed. I was obsessed as a kid. And like I suppose like, my brother would have played before me. Um, so he, he would have kind of gone through the whole J.R. Ryan Notre Dame thing. Um, and, and another thing was up in the courts. And, and I suppose it's a good example. Like the, lo the local basketball courts in Clash Dana, like. That was like that was like a real rucker park. Like like they, they were full, and I I go up there like as a little like nervous thirteen year old, and my brother was like eighteen, and he was playing with all the big boys who probably were, most of them playing the super league, and I'd like I'd wait for one of them to get injured and tired, and I'd jump in and try not to make a fool of myself, um, and I suppose that that that's kind of quieted down for years. Like 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 you had to queue to get on the court and stuff, and that's and oh. and, and I was talking to a, a legend of the game actually Neville Charles, um, 
it, just just today actually, and we we're kind of discussing. We're both trying to coach teams and stuff, and and trying to work out these regulations to to get it back going. But he was saying he actually had the queue to get his gun onto a court earlier, uh, yeah. earlier this week, and I was like, that's that's good. That's a great great sign of what's going on at the moment, yeah. Yeah, well, I notice even on my road now, I've got a six-year-old boy and we got him a hoop and it's out on our road and like three other families have one out on the road as well. And I like, I mean, a lot of it is just kids are in lockdown, they want something to play, but it's such an accessible sport now because it is out there, it's on the roads and like, I think it's a great thing to see. Yeah, yeah, real accessible. I, yeah, I spent my health, my, 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 uh, my niece uh, is like nine, she was like, like she, she's been playing like a, a lot of football. I don't think I don't think she's gonna be a big footballer. She's, I, I, I think she's not watching. I, I think I think I think she might be only playing because I'm involved uh, in the football. But like then we, we kind of got a basketball into our hands recently. Like and I spent like I spent the whole uh, whole of la one of the days last week trying to get it not to shoot with two hands. She's like, "Did she doing this?" And I was like, "I was doing all, this, all, all those drills." Were. But um, she's she's loving it now. Like and without like without being pushed into it at all, like, she's like she's kind of dragging dragging my sister to bring up to the courts as well, which is great. And yeah. uh, so yeah, that, that's the thing for real accessible sport. And, um, and yeah, there should be more playing. Yeah, definitely. And come here. What about the football then? So when did it become like uh, right? I'm going to need to go and put some more time into football, and basketball needs to sort of be on the side, or, or like how did that all come about? Uh, how did that come about? Um, like, like I, I, I played football. Um, like from from a young age as well. Like I played football like uh, since since I was under under elevens, whatever. I suppose basketball kind of just would always take in preference. Um, and then I suppose through my years and in, in, in Black Rock, it wasn't even an option. I wasn't able to. I was trapped in boarding school. I wasn't able to get out. Uh, so I was. Uh, yeah, the, the the there wasn't a whole lot of football played there at all. Um. I, I don't know. I think I think the football thing. I, I kind of accelerated a lot. I suppose between like seventeen and eighteen. Like I like really Dublin wasn't an option before that. Um, and I would have made a bit like yourself. Maybe if you're on the Irish uh, basketball team when I was sixteen. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was like that was that was like the uh, probably the peak of it for me. But uh, like I, I was kind of on the on the, on the off, coming off the back of that. And we did like a tour of the states and stuff, which was amazing. Um. And yeah, and then I, I like I, I suppose a Gaelic coach because Sheila Clear and fairness to her, she sent me for a trial with Dublin, and like I was like, what are you doing? Like like this? I don't know. Like a radio really, is a bit left field. Like like I don't know. And anyway, I, I went out and I, I like a, my, my whole thing at that time was I wasn't able to do anything. A bit similar to now, I can hear someone saying, uh, but I was <laughs> I was able to. I was good at catching, and I kind of caught a lot of balls, and um, they yeah, I managed to get, get get kind of brought forward for a trial and another trial, and then. A Dublin minors became a thing, um, so yeah, it, it, it kind of parachuted in, out of nowhere, kind of around seventeen, and then it was it was it was it was tough having to kind of try try to juggle the boats because we were playing under nineteen and, and the the we're trying to win the All Ireland with, with that sort of stuff, and yeah, I suppose I suppose when I gave up basketball for a few years, it was like it was a really tough call. I suppose I had two paths in front of me, and I suppose unfortunately Dublin were able to kind of show me a, a, a kind of brighter path at the time. Um, and with the big fancy crow park and maybe playing in front of these, these thousands of people and and I, 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 I kind of was, it was tough to turn down I think a lot of people would probably feel similarly though because that has happened to a lot of people over the years where they've you know played with two big sports and you've even seen in basketball like the amount of high profile people who've managed to have careers in football, ladies football, basketball, whatever it was. A lot of people have had a lot of success with this, but there does come a point for people when it just is not sustainable. And it's a, particularly around that age group. Like I'd say there's a lot of kids watching this now who are in the similar capacity to you, who are like, look, I'm an international, but I'm trying to be a county star. Like what sort of advice would you give those kind of people in, in your mind? Like I, I I always preach to those kids because they like like my basketball manager used to like ring my gay like just being like give up that give up that old football crap will you yeah. crap will you? and then my basketball or then I had my football manager in my ear going to mind that old basketball shite uh, and then like I had that the whole way growing up and it's like I'd be I'd be nowhere without the both of them like genuinely like everyone knows but I didn't have to say that like but like. I, th I think it's huge. Like, like I know, but from a scientific point of view or whatever, like that they're that they're kind of saying that playing like five sports as a kid, and then from like the age of twelve, and then three from the age of like fifteen, and then two, and then kind of narrow it down is is where you should be. But like I always tell kids, even if I'm in like a 
in a city school and like a kid, he just like all he wants to be is in the premiership. He like he thinks he's he's, he's going to be playing in Old Trafford or whatever. Like I'm like I was like yeah, well, but you need to you need to start playing some basketball, working your footwork. You need to you need to go swim and try and try and get your cardio up. Like like it's like it's it's it's, it's a huge kind of beneficial thing. And I think I think coaches need to be aware of that because coaches always want all of you. <laughs> coaches want yeah. all, want all of you. And I, I think it's it's probably it's it's tough to kind of be strong at that age to try and be like oh well actually volunteer there and everywhere like but um i think it's 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 yeah until you have to make that call around look if you're around 18 19 the calls can actually be made yeah yeah i see kojak making an interesting point on here a coach that lots of people would know and he's saying has basketball made you a better footballer because i would imagine there's a huge crossover between the two now yeah yeah whenever um points stay away from them but whenever you like you read a report about me uh, apart from being crap, it's usually that it's like unorthodox or unusual or different <laughs> or something. Uh, is what they say. But like, what they're basically saying is he's a basketball player rather than a football player. Uh, is 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 the is the gist of how we how we play? Like, and I always have like um. So yeah, like like it, look, I suppose like, when, it, when, I, when I'm coming down, when I'm running through the middle of Crow Park, and I have Kerry defenses running at me. Like it's I, I I've learned how to make my 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 decisions on a court that's many meters of the basketball court in a much smaller space like like that's yeah. that's where you learn handling that's where you learn where you learn all that uh so that that's huge it's huge it's it's like you can ask ask anyone ask Liam McKay and ask Ron McGarity ask Karen Donahue like do you know what I mean all, all, all these lads like I like I, I know I, I'd say I'd, I'd, I'd be an hour without it um like just generally like the double team wouldn't look at me and, and and the last decade wouldn't have happened for me if I didn't if I didn't have a basketball in my hand as a kid there is a huge basketball influence, though, even in the Dublin team with Jason being in there. Mark Ingle has been involved. It does seem over the years that Jim Gavin in particular hasn't been afraid of actually dipping into the basketball and saying, here, listen, maybe we actually can learn a little bit from these. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think Jim's willing to learn off anyone, um, to be honest with you. Um, like, we've, we've done very, very little. I think it's, it's been very hyped up about how much basketball we've done. We've done very little, to be honest with you. Um, I used to hate playing basketball with the lads because they're just a pack of mug savages. <laughs> and someone just takes I can't see them calling their own fouls anyway. Ah, it's just horrendous. Uh, so, like, we, like, we only did, we, we did a pre-season, like, a handful of times. Um, so, but, like, I think the lads all appreciate it. And, and, and I suppose another thing, the change in times, is that I come into the dressing room now and, like, Everyone is talking about, oh, did you see Kevin Durant's black block on blah blah blah? And like, I'm like, how do you know that? Like, and I'm like, eh, like I, 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 I'd say, I don't know, I'd say there's at least 15 players in the team now that know, know more about the NBA than I do. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's huge, yeah. Yeah, and but like, I know you say it's, it's, it's maybe overstated, but I do think when you have a group of players who are willing to learn and take on new skills, like a basketball that like, I mean, we have seen, we've all seen Dublin footballers going back over. like, you know, I mean, nobody, anybody who's watching a football game can see that people are learning something. And like in the modern game, GAA probably needed a bit of that because in fairness, like a bad game of football sometimes can be quite slow, but adding a little dimension like that, like it has actually changed the game in a lot of ways. It's been great. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, look, I I think so. As it like I I I couldn't be more of a kind of proponent of it. Uh, like a very like as I said, like I, if I was kind of coaching uh, football teams, which I never will. Uh, <laughs> I I'd have I'd have them playing basketball. because uh, like it, it's it's huge, and I think even even when you're coaching teams, I think even just to do something different uh, is is good psychologically. You get them thinking a different way. Um, but I yeah, like the the, the basketball is huge. Yeah. Come here. Neil Kelly asked a question there that I've always thought is interesting. How do you think Basketball Ireland can capitalise on all this and get basketball back to the kind of popularity levels that you and I would have grown up in? Is there something that you have seen out there that you think, yeah, listen, we could definitely do that and would help? Um, it's, it's, it's tough because it, like, it, it, it is there. Like, like, without a doubt, the interest is there. Um, I think... Um, Look, I, I I think the facts of it is there's a lot to be done in, in at, at the top level. Like if you look at um, coaching, and I was just telling my housemate the fact uh, earlier that I think Dublin and someone's I'm I'm sure I'm going to be wrong, but I'm not far off. Like Dublin has something like nearly fifty GPOs throughout throughout Dublin. Some, yeah. Some, sometime if I'm correct, I, I think mm. it's around fifty, and I uh, to to teach kids the skills of, of uh, Gaelic football. Basketball Ireland has won in Leinster. 
um at the moment like uh to look after coaching so like like that's tough that, that that's the numbers you're dealing with and and it's it's now obviously a basketball ireland could have 50 in dublin yeah. they would of course they would they, they, they don't have the resources that that, that the ga have at the moment um so it like it is huge like i i kind of like i i definitely I definitely believe in in role models are huge. Um, I th- I think that the the lads coming over from America made, and I think made such a kind of big impact in the communities that they came into. I think they were huge, like 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 Diora Marsh and Mayo and like do you know what I mean? Like so many people would have known these people. Uh, and and as I said, Anthony Jenkins and Lenny and the lads uh, around my area. Like like even when they came into the school, like their presence alone, like whatever they said, if they said jump, you jumped, like and 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 people wanted to be a be a be a part of what 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 they were, what they were bringing, um, so look, yeah, look, I think, I think there's a, there's a lot to do. I don't have the answers from a, from a, from a top level thing to get the finances right. I would love to see more coaches going, um, like I, I suppose like I, I I'm in the middle of, of of working the inner city stuff, and I'm I I'm in the middle, and I've kind of I, I've said I've said on record that I want to get a basketball club going in there, like. And and it's tough, like it is tough, um, like even in terms of like like, I, it, working in, in the inner city, like there's, it's it's hugely multicultural, it's a, a huge diverse uh uh amount of races in there, and which is great, and it's really like a lot of them have a strong interest in basketball, and I'm really trying to capitalize on it, um, what I find is 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 tough sometimes that I probably didn't appreciate growing up in in Notre Dame and Aina is like all the volunteerism stuff that would have been there. Like people don't realize that like when when Bally Bowd and my, my guard club operates, like there's there's like a hundred people every Saturday morning who are willing to give up their, their Saturday morning to go coaching. Like like I'm, I'm 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 we're struggling to kind of get those sort of numbers to yeah. to kind of set up a club. So like I was talking to the lads in Aina about like how they kind of had to re had to set up a club in Aina and yeah, it's it's like it's not easy. Like so like volunteerism is huge. Um, but it'd, it'd be great to see that the, I think the skills competition uh, be a bigger thing. I suppose like everyone is aware they're coming to Bun School and what a good job they've done. And um, I saw I know particularly in Dublin it, it culminates in in the big uh, big match in Crow Park usually if you can get there. Like, but it would be nice to be to to really kind of put a, put a highlight in that and to to like like I've worked in primary schools for for five six years, and like like there is a league, but it's wishy washy if I'm being honest um, and, and, and I think I think it could be stronger um, and, and, and there could be a bit more of a card at the end uh, for, the, for the kids to kind of buy into What about in that inner city programme because I mean lots of people would have seen you would have been involved with the game for mothers programme in there in the inner city as well and I mean when you look at the success of those kind of things it's phenomenal like so obviously there is a heartbeat of sport there that they want this so it, I mean maybe as you say it's just part of it is resources but quite obviously there's an appetite for it yeah, yeah. Uh, like I think in terms of um, in terms of appetites there, like if you, if you come in, if you go into like Mountjoy Square, like there's, there's there's people balling now all the time. There's, there's a couple of there's a couple of courts around. R- resources, like even from a financial point of view, is actually uh, isn't a huge thing at the moment because like the, I'm not trying to plug everything, but like the northeast inner city, which I'm working for at the moment, like has been backed by the government to to to, to try and really kind of give give the area area a kick. Uh, so I suppose it's just it's just trying to trying to get around. We try to do a number of like different programs, trying to run basketball tournaments and skills. Uh, like like we have an academy going every Saturday, which is which is good, and we have kids, and I suppose we're trying to get it to the next level, and the next level, um. Yeah, I suppose it's it's just it's just trying to get get all get all these pieces of the puzzle together, yeah. um. So it's it's a work we're a work in progress, yeah. Yeah, well, come here. Obviously, we don't have all night to be chatting about this, but um, you know, it's been amazing hearing some of your basketball stuff. But just to briefly touch on some of the football as well, because I'm sure there's people on here who are football and basketball fans. I mean, like the last few years with Dublin. Like in so many ways, when you're growing up as a kid and you're trying to decide, am I going to play basketball? Am I going to play football? I mean, there must be a part of you that couldn't have dreamed of the success that you guys have actually had on the pitch with Dublin as well. Uh, no, no, I suppose, I suppose we we, we wouldn't have. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a decent decade. Um, yeah, I, look, I, I I think when I when I kind of describe that or get asked that that question of sorts, I kind of just I kind of just say that the goal 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 goal. Yeah. Let's let's write out one more time. Yeah. The goal, the goal posts. That's what they're called. Apparently, uh, they, they, they kind of keep changing. So like, I, like I remember being in the hill and, and and around that time that my kind of my football accelerated around seventeen, eighteen, and it's kind of the minor team. I was like, geez, I would have, like I'd love to get out there. Like like I reckon I reckon I like I reckon I can do it. I can get out there. Like and like as in my my mission at that stage was like just to like 
come on as a sub onto Crow Park and then like and then get off and then like get my jersey and like go home and frame it. And like that was like that, was, that that'd be great if we could do that. That would be that'd be it. Uh, and then and then like whatever you yeah, ended up like managed to make a, a trial, things went well for me and then it's like geez I got a, I managed to come on in the game and then I managed to get a start and then I managed to win a Leinster and win a league and then managed to win an All Ireland and uh, I suppose it uh the goalposts keep changing like 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 I didn't I didn't I didn't set out to be where I am at the moment. Uh, but it's 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 kinda it's important to kinda I suppose keep changing your targets, yeah. Yeah. Um but five in a row. I mean look, I know you probably get asked it all the time and like you've always been one of these was it, was it five? Was like it? park it but I wasn't like wasn't sure Jackie was, yeah, it, was exactly, five, yeah. wasn't it? Who said, you know? Yeah, okay, never right. heard of this. But like there must be and probably now is not the time or even like in this current environment to be thinking about all the things that you win and whatever. But like just to be the team that does something like that, it like it is pretty phenomenal. And at some point in your life it will mean an awful lot to you. You know, you, you, you will tell your grandchildren, I was part of the team that did that. You know, like, it's, it's a special thing as much as you guys do try to go, it's not that important. I mean, at some point it is going to be. At some point, yeah. Yeah, I look forward to being... That's not today. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to being that fat old guy at the side of the pub. You'll that's never like, be that fat that, old guy that's, at the side of the pub. Oh, I'll be, I'll be that fat old guy, Jackie. I'll send you the picture when I'm that fat old guy. Please uh, don't. If you ever have. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no one wants to do that. Uh, and I'll be like trying to tell some young hotshots I used to be doing this. And Jackie right. Hardy used to ask me on our podcast and so Yeah, you're right. Um, you're right. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe those days are ahead of me. We'll see. Yeah, but look, I mean, in, in fairness, it, it, it has been a pretty remarkable career. The football at the moment, it's such a weird scenario. There's so many talks about the ifs and the buts of who's training, who's doing what, are we going to have a championship, are we not? Like, it is kind of surreal, isn't it? You must be glad that you got the five in a row out of the way last year that you don't have this hanging over you. <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit. It's, 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 it's mental, like, I suppose, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, and, and then I, I'm really trying to stay present with the whole situation, not, not to be too kind of yoga and buzzwordy with the mindfulness stuff, but it's just like every day the game changes, like in terms of, in terms of, like, in terms of work, in terms of football, in terms of everything that's going on, in terms of like the COVID stuff. So like, it's just, it's just, it's a real nice time to practice just like, like not caring about what's happening next. Like I'm like I'm like I'm 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 training. Like I'm tra I'm training hard. And I'm ready for whatever. Um, but I suppose we just it, it, it kind of it just at some point you just reach a reach a point of like sick of trying to predict what's gonna happen. Like yeah. Uh, so and I think it, you it, and me it, both. Yeah. We, that's on every side. I think everybody is feeling a little bit of that because yeah, yeah. no, 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 yeah. I like I've, I've like some of my friends, some of my like most well established mentally sane friends have like really suffered through this through this uh this crap and like and have like read themselves into like anxiety bubbles and like I like I have like cocoon for like months and haven't come out and they're perfectly healthy and just are in really bad shape over like so I think mm -hmm. it's just like you kinda of have to respect whatever space you're in. Even if you like sometimes sometimes people are waking up and they're like, All right, damn you COVID, I'm gonna I'm gonna run a ten K, I'm gonna like make some like Mitch and star food and then I'm gonna like do a course online and then other days you just want to sit in the couch do you know what I mean yeah. I, I think everyone's gone through that like um and that's 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 cool but like I, I suppose just we, we're just trying to like get a little balance and just and just like yeah stop trying to predict whatever crap's happening next yeah yeah I hear you um okay before we let you go quick fire round to finish these are uh nice and easy courtesy of basketball Ireland uh, so, Batman or Spider-Man? Batman. Instagram or Twitter? Twitter. Hardest opponent in basketball? Uh, hardest opponent in basketball? Uh, I'll give a shout out to Lorcan Murphy, who I had to mark oh, in a cup, cup quarter final. And I I done a bit of, I done a bit of research on Lork, Lorkin and I was like he does the I'm assuming you now do you know Lorkin and he and he does like yeah, no. he comes to get the ball at the three point line goes back door and I was like I knew this like and I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna sort him out like in the first ninety seconds of the game he dunked on me on a back door alley and then and then what did he do two minutes later did it again <laughs> in the first quarter uh, so Lorkin made a uh, holy show me up and did you spend the rest of the game on the bench. 
I was I, I don't know why, but for some reason I didn't mark him for the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who knew? He, he went he went out at forty points anyway, so I'll let him out. Yeah. Uh hardest opponent in the GAA. Hardest opponent? Hardest opponent in the GAA. Yeah. Uh hardest opponent in the GAA. Who did I used to say? I don't remember these days. I used to have some good uh some good battles with Sean Cavill in the day. Oh, I'd say you did. I'd say you did. Uh, what three things would you bring to the desert to a desert island? I would bring. I always give it to people for like uh, choosing a phone because the phone just has everything. Like, yeah. Uh, I'd bring some music of some sort. Uh, I'd bring like uh, I, I'm real fidgeter, so I need like I need like to. Like I need to, like I'm, like I have a unicycle at the back, and I've been Jesus. like, I've been learning, I've been wanting to learn for ages how to do it. Okay. I'm nearly killed myself about four thousand times, so I might bring the unicycle. It wouldn't be great on sand, but Probably if I could not. just find a, if I could find a little place to to work on that, um, that would keep me entertained for a while, and then, and then bring a barber. Give oh. a haircut. <laughs> Jesus, when you finish with him, send him over here, will you? Jane and Mark, we're all ready for a <laughs> um, Okay, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, the ability to have more superpowers. <laughs> 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 I always have those teaching kids and I ask some kids that question. They always do that. They're like, no, I'm allowed to do that. I won the lotto. I just want to win the lotto again. Um, yeah, I don't know. What I want my ability to be like, I was about to say X-ray vision, and then it's like, no, you just look like a creep. Um, what would it be? To be able to, uh, like, do you remember, like, Street Fighter? Yeah. Do you ever play a computer game? Do you remember, like... Yeah, when your man goes, hey, you can... Yeah, yeah that, that was right, you. And then, but, like, Dal Sam had, like, those, like, yeah. remember Dal Sam? He had, like, the real yeah. stretchy hands and feet. Yeah. Like, that'd be cool, like, if you're It'd in, like... for football and basketball as well, now, in fairness. That would you get some serious deals, but like if you're in like a, if you're in like McDonald's and like some dude at a burger and you're just like zoom, zoom. <laughs> that would be okay. Man. Two, two to finish. Two quick football ones to finish. Who would be a better basketballer of your football teammates, Brian Fenton or Dermot Connolly? Ooh, it's a good one actually. Uh, I'd say Fenton, my dad. He played, played a bit more. Yeah, he looks like he could be a good bowler. Okay, and last one. One more of your Dublin teammates, Owen Merchant, former basketball player as well. He was talking about height in the media last week. So, height or speed? Uh, speed. Oh, I, I, I wonder what Merch picked. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'd be looking for a superpower if you could get one. Um, <laughs> come here, Mick. Listen, you've been so good with your time tonight. We've really appreciated it. When are we going to see you back on a basketball court? Uh, soon, soon. Actually, well, if you want to come out to Lucan, uh, I'll be out there playing. I'm going to I'm gonna give Darren Gavin uh, uh, a one-on-one out there. Nice. Socially, socially distant, of course. Cool. Um, and, but apart from that, yeah, no, 100%. Uh, I, I definitely have some, some more years making a show myself in, uh, in the National Basketball Arena. So I'm looking forward to them. Brilliant. We're looking forward to it. Listen, thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you again. Mind yourself. Later. Thanks so much. Take care, Bye. everyone.